So my friends, welcome back to the channel, always in the series about room database for Android. In this video, I'm going to see how we can glue everything together like entities, DOs, and converters into one single class that will provide our database. Let's get started. So here you need to create the database class, the main database class that's created here, and let's just give it a name. Okay, let's give it, call it the word database. And here, in order to use this class, in order to let room generate everything for us, we'll have to make it an abstract class like follow and we will have to extend from what from the room database this one like the follow is that all of course no here we will have to annotate it with a special annotation called database and within this database we will have to give it multiple things first of all we have to give it the entities the entities need to be just an array and k class which are cotton classes our entities for this example is just the word class like following and we do just class like that that simple. If you have multiple entities, well, you have simply to add multiple classes here. After that, you have to give it the DAOs. We won't give the DAOs here or the data access object here. We'll have to create them like the following. We create an abstract function and we create our DAO as a function here. We call it word DAO like that, like the following, and we'll make it our class, which is word DAO. And Room will generate the required implementation for this abstract class or this interface. Here we have too many things we have to give also. We'll have to give it like the version. The version will be first, will be one. But when you upgrade your database, let's say you will add an entity or change something in the world for change a column, add a column, remove column. You have to update the version and you have to provide the right migrations. And finally, you can export the schema. Let's give it here false. By default, it is one. Exporting schema simply mean with every change of the version, they will export a file of the schema that you can store it, for example, in your version control system. Like this will help in the long run to see the differences. Maybe you can apply tests to your migrations using that export scheme. Simply we'll put force here. And when you are in the development phase, like when you when you have to add something to a word, add an extra entity, just keep the version to one and just keep removing the application from your phone. Because let's say that if you add another entity and you keep the version to one and you have all the installed application in your emulator or your device the app will crash and it will tell you that the version like there is a problem with the version in order to fix that well you have to create migration but since the application isn't in the production yet you can simply remove your application from the device and just keep the version one and once you publish your app and you start getting some installation for your applications here you won't ask the user to delete the application you have to do the migrations yourself in order to map the previous data to the new data add something add class and so on so that's it and here after creating this one we have to provide an instance for our database now the way we have to build our database let's create a function here called build database and this will give us something called the word database this is our object using this object we can access this word DAO and so on in order to create the word database you have to do like the following room dot database builder we have two main things here we have this database builder and in memory database builder we can use that for testing purposes like it will give you an in memory database builder and you can build with it your database but for normal cases you have to use this database builder we will create this here but after that when we introduce health dependency injection we will create the database from there and provide it from there here you have to give it a context okay so we have to get some context out of something context another parameter is the k class which is this class which is the word database class and finally you have to give it a name like the database name i will just name it word.db like for this is how we can create the database and now we just do the build and we just return our results now the first time the database will be created if it's not other than that it will just give you the same reference for the next cost now you want to be calling this build database from everywhere so we have to make it like private here and now, in order to create this database, usually we'll have to provide a single instance from that. If you are going to use health, well, that's simple. But if here, you have to do it like by yourself with a single top patch. Simply what you have to do is like create private var. And let's call it instance here, like following. And this will be like our word database. 
and it will be null by default. And since we are dealing with threads and everything here, let's make it volatile here. So the right to this instance will be visible to other threads, something like that. And here, let's provide our function, our main function that will do get the database like follow. And here, what we'll have to do, we have to create a synchronized block. Well, well, first of all, before creating the synchronized block, we have to do the following. We will have to check if the instance is not null or it is null. Here we'll have to create the database, okay, and assign it for the instance. And here we use this function we created, like it is called build database. Oh, sorry, we have to make it here. Build our database using following. Here we have a context, so we must get the context from the outside. And boom, we created our instance. Simply here we would return like this instance. Do that. And we are pretty sure it is not null, like following. But here you have to use a synchronized block using this lock in order to synchronize this block. So that way we created our database. And now, whenever you want to use this database, you will just call word database dot get database. For example, let's name it instance, like following. And using that instance, you can access the word DAO. And using that word DAO, you can insert, update, delete, and get your words. That's simply how you can set up your database. Now, this is a lot of things here, like you have to set word DAO, converters, and words, and entities, but this is like separating a lot of concerns here. If you want to change, for example, just query, you don't have to modify many things, just go to the word DAO and just change it here, you don't have to replace anything. Here. And also, the responsibility for creating the database has nothing to do with other things related to the DAO or the converters. And yeah, I'm sorry, I forget about the converters. To add the converters, you're simply annotated with the type converter with the S1. And here to provide, I think, yeah, a var arc of multiple converters. Our one is called room converters, double that, class, and you are ready to go. Let's run the app in order to see if you have some errors or not. And yes, we have an error here. Okay, so what's error? This is the kind of the compilation error I was talking about. So there is an error here in the word, and there is an error here in the this one. So first of all, error to use routine features, you must add ktx artifact to the room. Room ktx, okay, that's pretty well. Let's go here and let's just add it. And we have changed it from runtime to room this KTX. Let's run it again. I think we'll have multiple other errors. Exactly, let's go back here. Not sure how to handle the delete. So the delete return int. Ah, okay, so the delete doesn't return a log, it return an int. Let me go back here to the DAO for the delete, for the remove, it return an int. Ah, okay, it doesn't return the index, it returns the number of how many entities we deleted. Same thing for the this one, I think. Yeah, let me just write it again and let's check. Exactly, we don't have an error here. And here we have an error for what? For this word, like error entities and bojos must have usable public constructor. You can have an empty constructor or a constructor whose parameter match the fields by name and type. Like we have a problem in our entity. Let's go back to the word entity. I'm here just demonstrating the feature of the compilation errors you get. For example, if let's say that I get an error here. Let's say I just missed right here. You won't see an error here, but there is a thing here. Let's say you have this closed and you run it. You would get an error here that this one isn't working anymore. As you can see, SQL error, missing no such a table. Okay, that's the thing I'm talking about. But let's go and fix that. Here for this word thing, let's go back to DAO to fix it first and do the table. It can't set the value because the way room work in order to create those things is by setting it. So simply what they have to do is just create a bar, okay? Bar for everything. And also after changing this one, you have to give it like default values. Let's say here by default, I would give it, for example, minus one. This value will get changed by true, but it requires this thing. For string, I will give it like the default one and the counter will be zero. And the current date, let's just give it a date of today. And now if you just run it for the last time, I don't think we won't have a couple of errors because we fixed everything. So just remember that we really require an empty constructor in order to fit it after with the required thing. Okay, so we don't have any compilation error. So that's it for this video. In the next videos, I'll go see how we can start using this room database with view models, repositories, and everything in between. Thanks a lot for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next videos. Salam alaikum.